Corsair have recently added to their pretty extensive range of peripherals by releasing this. This is the K70 Pro Mini Wireless. With so much competition in the keyboard space, what does this board offer that others don't? It's got a price tag of £169.99p, so it certainly needs to deliver. Let's take an in-depth look and see if it can. Hey guys, I hope you're all good. I'm Matt and welcome back to Kit Guru for another review. This time around, I'll be giving you the rundown and my thoughts on the new Corsair K70 Pro Mini wireless keyboard. Let's kick things off with a quick unboxing. The box for the K70 Pro Mini is tiny. It's only just bigger than the keyboard itself and it's only just big enough for the keyboard and the accessories. And although I do like the small compact packaging, the protection that it's going to provide during delivery is a little bit of a concern. It's pretty standard stuff as far as the box itself goes, with the usual product pictures on the front, back, sides, everywhere, Corsair branding all over the box as well. There's also some brief information on the features, like being able to connect it to an Xbox, PlayStation and mobile, as well as PC and Mac. Once you open up the box, it reveals the K70 Pro Mini inside a plastic bag, a bit more protection for the board would have been nice to see. Underneath that you'll find the 1.8 meter braided USB type C to USB type A cable, an alternative radiant space bar, a Corsair logo escape key, switch and keycap removal tools, and a couple of leaflets on safety and warranty information. I absolutely love that they included an alternative space bar and escape key, but I can't help thinking that a wrist rest would have been a nice addition too. Now I think the K70 Pro Mini is a decent looking keyboard. The first thing that stood out to me when I got it out of the box was that the body has a tapered design, which means the board is slightly inclined, even with the adjustable feet folded completely flat. The top of the keyboard is, like most 60% keyboards, pretty simplistic in its design, and as I've pointed out in previous reviews, there isn't much space to do anything out of the ordinary. The double shot PBT keycaps have shine through legends, which really helps the RGB effects stand out in darker environments. The included radiant spacebar takes this to the next level. It's got a shine through pattern made up of loads of tiny triangles. I think it looks great and it's a nice change from regular boring or plain spacebars. The back plate of the keyboard is made from aluminium and is just a couple of millimetres bigger than the layout of all of the keys. Now, usually the sides and edges of keyboards are pretty plain and boring, but Corsair have tried to liven things up with the inclusion of the 360 degree light edge. This is a fully customizable RGB strip that spans the entire edge of the K70. It's a nice addition, which looks great in my opinion. It's got 28 different customizable zones and you can set different effects on the light edge to the rest of the board using custom layers in Corsair's IQ software, which we'll touch on later in the video. Now, in my opinion, Corsair produced some of the best RGB effects and options around, and this is no exception with this light edge. It adds another layer of personalization to a product that was already pretty customizable. Great stuff. Along the top edge of the board, is a storage slot for the slipstream wireless connector, as well as the on off switch for when you're using it wirelessly and a very small Corsair logo. The bottom of the K70 Pro Mini is made from plastic and houses the adjustable feet and anti-slip rubber pads. These feet only have one level of adjustment, which was a bit disappointing. I'd like to have seen two levels of adjustment available here at the least. And as I mentioned earlier, the keyboard does have a slight incline even when the feet are flat. So I can see why Corsair went with this design for the feet, but it wouldn't have been much trouble for them to include some which have a few different options for choosing out incline levels. The rubber pads on the bottom of the K70 Pro Mini ensure that the board is quite stable when it's sitting on my desk. It's never moved at all during my testing and that's been gaming, typing and just some general use. The RGB options on the K70 Pro Mini are quite extensive. Corsair's RGB system, as I mentioned, is one of the best out there and that's no different on this board. There are loads of presets available in IQ from watercolor, 
rainbow wave, type lighting, visor, there's loads. And if you want to go even deeper, you can fully customize every single key individually and create complex lighting effects and save them to the various onboard memory profiles. There are even options to create different lighting setups for both wired and wireless mode, which is really useful if you want to create one that uses a little bit less battery for when you're going to go wireless. So let's talk about the build quality of this keyboard. I've been really pleased with how this keyboard feels while I've been testing it. The K70 Pro Mini feels really solid and really sturdy. As with most 60% keyboards, there's not very much flex in the frame at all due to its small size, it keeps everything quite rigid. The keycaps are really, really good quality. You can see the clear divide between the two layers used in production, hence that double shot name. You can tell that these keycaps are not going to wear out or break anytime soon. And that's the same for the braided cable that's included. It's quite thick and the connectors feel really well made and robust. Overall, this is a really well made keyboard. I don't have any concerns about the build quality at all. Now let's talk about the switches. The model that I have for review came with Cherry MX red switches pre-installed, but the K70 Pro Mini does have a hot swappable PCB so you're free to change to any Cherry MX switches that you want to. It's as easy as just popping them out with the switch removal tool and then popping the new one in. Corsair sent me out a range of switches to test with this board, so I'm gonna replace a few for the sound test that we're gonna do in a minute, so you can hear the difference between linear, tactile, and clicky switches when they're installed in the K70 Pro Mini Wireless. Now that sound test is out of the way, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The spacebar sounds awful. It sounds quite cheap. This keyboard costs 170 quid, and the spacebar sounds like it's straight off of a budget keyboard. The other keys with stabilizers are marginally better due to their smaller size, but they still don't sound that great to me. If you were to couple the spacebar with a clicky switch, it gets obnoxiously loud and rattly. The non stabilized keys sound okay but the overall sound is seriously let down by the rattle on the other ones. And this keyboard does feature a standard bottom row, so you can change the keycaps for any Cherry MX compatible set that you want. This is a nice touch and it allows us more choice when customizing our boards with an aftermarket set of keycaps, for example. So now here's my thoughts on the connectivity and the battery life. The K70 Pro Mini is quite a versatile keyboard when it comes to connectivity. There are three options available. Slipstream wireless using the included USB dongle, Bluetooth, and then wired. Now let's talk about that wired connection first. When using the keyboard in this mode, the polling rate can be set to a maximum of 8,000 Hertz in IQ, and the board uses Corsair's Accent technology to help process keystrokes as fast as possible. Now I've gained on both 1,000 Hertz keyboards and 8,000 Hertz keyboards, and I've got to be honest, I can't really tell that much of a difference. But this is a hard spec to measure as it's mostly about feel, much like trying to show a high refresh rate monitor in action. Your results may vary and you might feel like the next shroud when you push up that polling rate to 8000 Hz though. Next there's the slipstream wireless connection. This is the mode that I've used the most during my testing as I found it really convenient. It was always reliable and always provided a consistent experience. The only slight criticism I have is that when the keyboard is in standby mode, it can take a second for it to wake up before registering keystrokes. This was really noticeable when logging into my PC after it booting up. I'd have to press a button to wake the keyboard up, then wait a second before entering my PIN number to unlock Windows. The polling rate is locked at 2000 Hz when using Slipstream Wireless, and to me it feels no different to using the wired connection. 
which says a little bit about 8000 Hertz in general and whether it's just a clever marketing gimmick. And finally, there's that Bluetooth connection. There are three separate Bluetooth profiles so you can connect up to three devices at the same time and then quickly switch between them using keyboard shortcuts. Connecting the keyboard via Bluetooth is easy, but there is quite a lot of noticeable input delay. So this isn't something I'd ever recommend if you're gonna use the keyboard for gaming. It might be useful for connecting to a mobile device or a tablet though. The versatility is great, and although us gamers will probably never use the Bluetooth feature, it's definitely nice to see it included for anyone that needs it. The battery life when using the K70 Pro Mini has been pretty decent. Corsair state that the battery should last up to 32 hours. But there are a lot of factors that will affect that though. To hit the full 32 hours, you'd need to turn off the RGB completely and probably lower the polling rate all the way down to the minimum. Well, during my testing, I found the battery life to be okay. I've had to charge the keyboard just once during about a week of use with me averaging a few hours a day. And even then the battery wasn't fully depleted when I put it on charge. I would love to give you exact figures, which leads to my only slight criticism I have is that the battery level indicator doesn't show an exact figure. And instead it shows the percentage left in the battery as either full, low or high, for example. An exact percentage would be nice to see. I'm sure Corsair can add this in a future update to IQ. And speaking of IQ, let's look at it in a bit more detail. The K70 Pro Mini can be fully configured and customized using Corsair's IQ software. I've owned several Corsair products over the years and I've always found IQ to be decent. And that hasn't changed with my time with this keyboard. The user interface is clean and customizing the board is quite simple. There are tabs for both software and hardware configured lighting and key assignments. So you can set the keyboard up, save everything to one of the onboard memory profiles, and then you don't even have to have IQ running if you don't want to. That's a big, big plus from me. Giving us the choice between running software or not running software is brilliant. There's a tab in IQ specifically for changing the indicator key colors and disabling certain keys and key combinations. So like Alt F4, for example, you can turn off the ability to rage quit from games. The device settings screen is where you'll be able to change the polling rate when using the wired connection. But in there, you can also change the keyboard to a different language if you'd like. That's a really nice feature and will benefit any multilingual users of this keyboard. Now, overall, IQ is one of my favorite peripheral slash companion softwares. It's simple to use and now that Corsair products can be used with or without it, it's a great setup, whether you like software or not. If you do choose to go with it, it's always been a great experience in my opinion. So in conclusion, my final thoughts on the K70 Pro Mini are a little bit mixed. On the one hand, it's a solid 60% keyboard, which is versatile, highly customizable, and it's backed up by really great software. Then on the other hand, it's let down by the really poor stabilizers. I just can't look past the sound of that space bar with the price being as high as it is. Back onto the other hand, the RGB is very, very good, as is the usual from Corsair products. It fits in well to the Corsair ecosystem and will sync up perfectly with any other Corsair products that you own. The ability to change the keycaps and the switches is definitely nice, but it's certainly nothing out of the ordinary. This is a feature of many other keyboards, so it isn't really a unique selling point. I guess it boils down to, if you already own a lot of other Corsair products and want a decent 60% keyboard that will work seamlessly with them, then the K70 Pro Mini will be worth checking out. If you're not bothered about the brand or you don't own any other Corsair products to sync up with it, and you just want a decent 60% keyboard, then there may be a few better options out there. Well, that's the end of the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe with the notifications on to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. There are links in the description if you want to check out our merch like this t-shirt that I'm wearing. There's also a link there to Patreon if you want to show us some support. Anyway guys, I've been Matt. This has been the new Corsair K70 Pro Mini wireless keyboard. Look after yourselves and I will speak to you in the next one. See you later.